Tonight, the lift bridge that's causing headaches and costing cash for people near Cherry Beach. It's an inconvenience. Big time, yeah, big time inconvenience for a lot of people. A lot of people want to come here to swim. They can't come here either. They have to go around. Even the buses have to go around. How much longer the city says Cherry Street Bridge will be stuck up in the air? Plus... You can see the, the meat. It's taller than me. Right? Overgrown outrage. Why this homeowner is accusing the city of being a nuisance neighbor. And... Thank you for making it rain night after night. A rousing welcome home for a Blue Jays all-star. Josh Donaldson returns to the Rogers Center. Good evening, I'm Chris Glover. A malfunctioning lift bridge has been frustrating people near Cherry Beach for nearly a month now. And tonight, we're finally getting a clear picture of when the problem will lift and just how much it's costing people. Kelda Yoon joins us live now from Cherry Street Bridge. Kelda, when exactly will that bridge be usable again? Well, Chris, an official update is expected tomorrow, but a city official did tell me tonight that it will likely be another two weeks before that bridge behind me can come back down. Many people, though, are, of course, hoping it will be much sooner than that. It's a site those close to the Portlands have had to get used to. It's been up a long time. You'd think they'd have it down by now. But almost a month after a mechanical failure caused the bridge to be stuck that way, the problem still hasn't been fixed. The bridge over the Keating Channel is one of the only access points to the Portlands. With it being out of commission, access has been limited to Carlaw Avenue and Leslie Street. For many pedestrians, cyclists and those on scooters, it's more than a little frustrating. It's hard because um, without this, I have to take the, the, the 121 bus and it's on diversion. So it throws the schedule all off. It's been bothering me a lot. Uh, it's my regular bike path, so I have to go around. I have to dismount. It, af it affects my pace. For Uber driver Adnan Ahmed, it's been a headache almost every weekend. He says it's tripled the time it takes him to pick up customers at the nearby Rebel nightclub. It usually takes off like one hour to pick up the customer, so it's like really bad. So the first stage in our three-stage work plan is the... The city is pleading for patience, releasing this latest video on Twitter showing the phases of repair work. Even the mayor stuck explaining why it's taking so long. It turned out the fixing of the bridge was a very complicated matter once it was discovered what was wrong with it and it involved not only uh, putting some supports in place to bring it down, uh, but then to replace uh, the mechanisms that were uh, in a state of disrepair. At the Keating Channel Pub and Grill, owner Shakir Omar has his fingers crossed there will not be any further delays. We're down to probably about some days 30 percent, some days 50 percent. He says it's not just his business that's suffering. It's been challenging. The people that own the gold carts, they've lost some business. The axe throwing, uh, they've lost a bit of business. We've lost like, you know, a third of our summer. So tomorrow we will get an updated timeline for all this. But Chris, here's the kicker. Even after this not so quick fix, that bridge, it's slated to come down and replace, be replaced by an entirely new one in a year and a half's time. It's all part of the Portland's redevelopment project, which will see the entire area change completely. Oh, brother. Well, thanks for this tonight, Kelda. Now to a trial that's back to square one for a foiled terrorism plot. Two men convicted of trying to derail a passenger train in 2013 will get a new trial because of a jury selection mistake. The convictions of Rod Jasser and Sheheb Essa Geyer were set aside today. Police claimed the men had watched trains and railways in the GTA. And in 2015, the pair were found guilty of eight terror-related charges. Earlier this year, they appealed, arguing the jury was improperly selected. And with today's decision, they can be released from prison while they wait for a new trial. Toronto's chief of police is keeping his job for one more year, but the reaction to the news is turning out to be as contentious as his time in that role. The chair of the police board called Chief Mark Saunders a champion of the modernization effort at Toronto Police. Toronto's mayor said his extension would allow for stability. And Saunders himself striking a tone of gratitude today. It's a privilege, he tweeted, to lead the Toronto Police Service, and I am humbled to be continuing. But one of Saunders' biggest critics is not mincing words.
we were surprised that uh, given that our morale is at the lowest that it's been um, in decades, um, we have a staffing crisis within the Toronto Police Service. We also are experiencing the highest incidence of gun crime that we've ever experienced in the city of Toronto. Last year, Toronto dealt with a record number of homicides, and this summer, there's been an escalation in gang turf wars. The chief is extended until 2021, at which point it's expected he'll be replaced with someone new. Next to a park in Toronto that's the center of a national political feud today, with the election less than two months away, the federal government, uh, the federal environment minister announced support to upgrade the largest urban park in North America. Angelina King now on how her pre-campaign speech resulted in yet another climate change clash. Right now, this space is an overflow parking lot for the Toronto Zoo, but in three years, it'll be transformed into a welcome and learning center at Rouge National Urban Park. It's critically important, and nature needs our help. And in less than a month, there'll be a new five-kilometer trail and two visitor areas. Toronto's mayor says it'll benefit those living in high-rise buildings. And it is so important to their health and well-being that there's a place where they can go to experience nature. Ottawa is spending $20 million on the centre, money already budgeted for. Catherine McKenna made the announcement while pushing her message. Climate change is an economic issue. Climate change is a health issue. She also announced a rebate program specifically for Ontario. Those who buy certain energy-efficient appliances can save up to $1,000. Unfortunately, we all know what happened under Premier Ford. First day he came into office, he made it free to pollute, but he cut energy efficiency programs. So we're now working directly with Ontarians. In a statement, Ontario's Environment Minister said in part, the financial accountability officer said the Trudeau government's carbon tax will cost an extra $648 a year by 2022. Now the federal government is suggesting it could cost even more. I'm calling on my federal counterpart to be upfront and disclose the real cost of her government's carbon tax plan. This political science professor says it's a hot button election issue. She says whether these types of announcements will resonate with voters depends on how they define climate change. People care about their quality of life. They care about schools, they care about clean air and clean water, they care about their commute, and uh, to the extent that we can connect climate change to those things, I think they are very concerned. And for somebody who specializes in global environmental politics, Green says she's underwhelmed by all the party's platforms, except maybe the Greens, when it comes to climate change and the environment. Angelina King, CBC News, Toronto. Time now for a first look at your weather forecast with Colette Kennedy. And Colette, you promised us today would be a rainy day, and boy, did the skies deliver. Yeah, I don't always like to promise things like that, but <laughs> hey, you're right. That it was is a good forecast. for the plants, right? There you go. It's, yeah. good for, it's good for something. And you know what? The thing is, it's kind of a one-day event, and then there's a few little spots that we may see a little precipitation coming back, but primarily after today, we get into another really nice pattern. So our average low at this time of year, 12.9 degrees, record low, 6.1. Tonight, we're headed towards 17. We'll kind of see a range, 16 to 18, around the GTA, but 17 for the city in terms of what we're talking about. And there's just a little bit of residual instability here, so a few really spotty showers. Primarily, this is moving off towards the east, and we get into a clearing trend. So although overnight a little patchy fog is possible, by tomorrow morning, we're into a nice pattern. So starting off with some sunshine in here, sunshine into the afternoon hours as well. Now, I'll just, this is where I say there's a few little areas with some spotty, that risk of precipitation, and that would be late tomorrow afternoon into tomorrow evening. We could see some isolated showers just kind of popping up. It's not going to be very widespread. Then we get into a a nice day again on Thursday and then it's going to be Thursday overnight we may see this isn't all going to hold together but we may see a few showers through the overnight hours so our daytimes are pretty good here overnight tonight though everything kind of moving out 17 for the overnight low and then tomorrow 25 still a little breezy with those winds coming in from the southwest but not too bad and we'll take a look at what the temperatures look like coming up in the next few days a little later in the show Chris all right sounds good thanks Colette you're welcome this North York homeowner is pleading with the city to stop being such an awful neighbor and cut the grass already. That story is coming up.
A North York man says for years he's been stuck with a nightmare neighbor. Adding to his frustrations, that neighbor, it's the city of Toronto. Here's Shannon Martin with one man's accusations of hypocrisy on high. It's a terrible, like, like me. I'm tired and I'm frustrating. The, the grass is so ugly. The grass was taller than you. Yes, correct. Very tall. Hao Chan Wu says the trouble started back in 2017 when the city acquired an empty lot next door. Soon the grass towered over Wu himself. He started snapping photos and sending emails and calling 311. Welcome to 311 Toronto. He even put up this sign urging his neighbors to complain. You can see the, the meat. You told that at me, right? Maybe a one, uh, one point eight meter. Wu says a crew eventually arrived mowing the lawn three times in 2017. Last year it was done twice. So far this year, just once, and that was last week. The city actually has a long grass and weeds policy. Homeowners are expected to keep their grass less than 20 centimeters or eight inches. Otherwise, they could end up with a fine. For this own property, who can give it to the city? The fine and the ticket, right? Right, so the city can fine us regular people yeah, yeah. for not maintaining our grass, mm -hmm. but who's going to ticket the city? Yes, that uh, makes sense, right? A spokesperson for the city's transportation department told CBC Toronto in an email the land was acquired to facilitate improvements to the North York Centre South Service Road. There's no equipment here or anything. No, like, you wonder no. what they're doing with the land. No. no. And he's never seen any city workers on site, except when he's called to complain about the weeds. He just wants the city to care for its property the same way he takes care of his. Keep it nice, right? We are the, the whole area. We are nice. And Shannon joins us now. So, Shannon, we heard Wu there calling for his neighbors to help. Yes. Did that happen? Yes, for sure. So we talked Good. to another neighbor on the street. He's been calling 311. He's been sending emails for the past couple of years. Again, they say they're not trying to be a pain. They just say, we like our neighborhood. It's a nice neighborhood. Let's all take care of it. Mm. And how about the transportation department? Because I know you were trying to reach out to them as well. Right. So basically, all they told us is that, yes, the transportation department does own the property. But when we try to ask follow-up questions, like, what's the budget for maintaining lots like these? Or has a private contractor been hired to do it, but maybe they're not keeping up? We didn't get any response on that end. But the city councillor for the area, John Filion, has a theory. He thinks the city bought the property but then has lost track of it altogether, and that's why it's not being maintained. Either way, for Wu, for his neighbours, they just want it taken care of. They're mm -hmm. going to keep up their campaign and try to get it done. Interesting to see where this goes. Yes, for sure. Thanks, Shannon. You're welcome. All right, former Blue Jay Josh Donaldson is living up to his Bringer of Rain nickname today. The former Jays' third baseman is back in town for the first time since being traded. How he's feeling being back in Toronto is coming up.
The weather update is brought to you by Train Extreme Conditions Testing. It's hard to stop a train, really hard. Train, the most reliable heating and cooling brand. He was known as the bringer of rain during his time in Toronto, so it's only fitting that it's a rainy day in the city as Josh Donaldson returns to the Rogers Centre. So he brought the rain, but he couldn't bring a win. The Jays edged out the Atlanta Braves 3-1 to one tonight. It's the first time we're seeing Donaldson play at the Dome since he was traded by the Jays. Greg Ross now with a look back at his legacy and what Donaldson is saying about it now. It didn't take long for Josh Donaldson to make his mark with the Blue Jays. Like in this game against the White Sox early in his first season, Donaldson became the first Blue Jay ever to record four hits, four RBIs, and four runs in the same game. He'll get there, dives in, and caught it! But Donaldson didn't just dazzle fans with his bat. Donaldson bare hands, fires, and gets him. Donaldson nice quickly rose to Donaldson. superstar status, not just in Toronto, but across the country. Josh Donaldson, without a doubt, is the best third baseman. By the end of the 2015 season, Donaldson was among the league leaders in almost every offensive category, and he led the Blue Jays in home runs with 41. And he's got it again. Good enough to earn Donaldson American League MVP honors, and in doing so, helped lead the Jays back to the postseason for the first time in more than 20 years, making it as far as the American League Championship Series. You know, 2015 was a, a special year for me and this organization, you know, kind of I was told that this city would go uh, on fire if you were able to get into the playoffs. And, you know, those people weren't wrong that told me that that was one of the most special years that I've been a part of. The city was on fire. It was electric. There's a drive. Deep to Donaldson picked up right where he left off in his second season in Toronto. He scored a pair of runs. This is a deep drive to center. He had another monster year at the plate, finishing fourth in MVP voting. A three and one right there for Dallas. Here comes the runner, Donaldson. He's selling. And he was also an integral part of the Blue Jays' second straight playoff run. The fans love him. No boost tonight. All cheers. He was a fan player. Everybody loved him. I will forever be grateful for the fans and what they've, how they took me in from day one and how they had received me here. Donaldson's time with the Blue Jays didn't exactly end on a high note. He was dealing with a lot of injury problems in his last season and a half here. He said today that he's hoping this little mini two-game series will help bring some closure to his tenure in Toronto. Oh, and by the way, you might remember his nickname, Bringer of Rain. I asked him if he had anything to do with bringing this rainy weather we've had all day with him. He said, hey, you think it's just a nickname? And then he smiled and said it's good to be back. Greg Ross, CBC News, Toronto. Let's get back to Colette now. And Colette, you said tomorrow is going to be a better day than today, right? Oh, yeah, it's looking pretty good, actually, Chris, in terms of our sky conditions. Lots of sunshine, just a slim chance for some showers uh, as we get into the evening hours. But we're not going to see much out of this. I think you're going to enjoy it. Uh, average high at this time of year, we'll be close to it. 24.4 is what it is. Average low tonight, we won't be close to that. We'll be a little on the mild side. It's close to just under 13 degrees. I want to show you those winds, of course, a little breezy at times in terms of what we experience. But as we go into tomorrow, yeah, some of the gusts may be around 30 to 35 kilometers an hour not too significant and the sustained winds closer to 20 so yes there'll be a breeze coming out of the southwest at times you may notice it a little more if you're in the downtown core you get between some of the buildings there into a bit of a wind tunnel but it's not too bad as we're going to find them kind of easing off a little bit so the story beyond that is to look at what's happening with the system leaving us so we get into a clearing pattern overnight tonight still just a few little residual showers or a drizzle but that's moving out by tomorrow morning that's where we get into sunshine that's why so much of the day looks really good actually and in many cases you're going to find the whole day is good and what I mean by that it's only going to be in a few cases where we get an isolated shower perhaps popping up late tomorrow afternoon into tomorrow evening then Thursday again spotty shower well to the north of the GTA otherwise we're looking at a good deal of sunshine and then it's going to be Thursday 
Thursday in the overnight hours, it looks like. And by the way, this is going to break up a little bit. It looks like the models are going to pull this apart as it continues to push southward. So we may have some stray showers coming through, but probably not as bad as it's looking at this point. Perhaps some heavier stuff, though, coming through southwestern Ontario, where it may hold together just a little bit better. Otherwise, overnight tonight, we're talking about 15 to 16 for our overnight lows. And then for you tomorrow, winds are 26, becoming a mix of sun and cloud. And again, not too bad of a breeze, but a little bit there coming out of the southwest. Of course, we've been having some issues with the wind coming off the lake, so a little more southwesterly helps somewhat. Chatham-Kent tomorrow, 25 for your high. And back towards the GTA, 16 to 18 for our overnight lows. Any little showers left over pushing out of here, setting up for sunshine tomorrow morning, and highs in the mid-20s. So looking like a very nice day for you. Midweek hump day to get through. It's late Wednesday, isolated shower possible. Thursday, overnight, Isolated shower possible, otherwise 25 through the day. Mix of sun and cloud Friday and 24 for the high. And it does cool down, it looks like, a little bit into the weekend. So our highs into the low 20s, it's going to have a little bit of that fall feel to it in terms of those temperatures. Uh, but sky conditions looking pretty good. Slim chance of showers there, Chris. Too bad to see those cooler temperatures for the long weekend, though. I know, going into the long weekend, at least the water temperatures are still pretty good. So hey, that helps good. somewhat. <laughs> Summer's not done with us. It'll be coming back. All right. Thanks, Colette. You're welcome. You can expect a high of 22 degrees Celsius. Look out, Colette. This guy tells the weather and it dances. It could also greet you at your next visit to the bank. More on HSBC's new robot after the break. Customers at a downtown bank will soon be greeted by a new face, if you can call it that. HSBC is rolling out a humanoid robot at its York Street branch this week. The bank is promising that Pepper will improve customer experience. Our video producer, Richard Ajikate, met the robot and put together this story. 
Pepper's about elevating our employees because Pepper's going to be bringing in all types of clients into this branch and other branches. Our employees will be able to focus on what they do best, which is providing advice to our clients. You can expect a high of 22 degrees Celsius. And we see the role of humanoid robotics is augmenting our wonderful people to give them more time to serve more customers and higher value added transactions because Pepper can gamify some of those experiences and some of those more binary interactions, telling the customer uh, how to use uh, the ATM, for example, or how to self-serve. It takes the pressure off the lines, it reduces customer waiting times and, and the waiting experience improves. Just don't take away their jobs. We all like talking to a human being, after all. I say that artificial intelligence is not there yet. Don't be afraid of this thing coming in and stealing your job. It's not there to do that. It's there to alleviate some of those menial tasks that you don't enjoy doing or some of the repetitive tasks. That's what automation is about. It's about taking some of that lightweight stuff off of people's hands. So it's augmenting the workforce by answering some of the simple questions and then passing off to the employees uh, when they're ready. May I help you with anything else? I hope they can like issue coffee and, and a cake. That'd be great. Touch the green arrow when you're done writing your name. Coffee and cake would be a nice touch. And just before we go, a little dog in Halifax is taking the internet by storm. Frankie the Beagle travels around the city in style. Look at that. He rides in his owner's backpack while they cycle around the city and sometimes sports a pair of blue goggles to protect his eyes. Not there, though. His owner created an Instagram account for his backpack buddy, but unlike most cyclists, Frankie actually likes red lights and detours because that's when he gets a quick treat. And that is our show for tonight. Join Dwight and the team tomorrow at 6, and I'll be back here tomorrow night at 11. Have a great night.